European Fiction 2012 features 34 stories from 26 countries in the third edition of the popular anthology from Dulkey Archive Press and tasteful editor Alexander Hemmen. Hemmen makes plain in his introduction that this anthology comes to us after an unusually fiery year in European news. Let's see, there was the student uprising in London, there was the debt debacle with Greece, the ongoing crisis with the Euro, there was the massacre in Norway, there was the resigning of Berlusconi, and there was the Occupy protests that spread across the continent. It is quite the time to immerse ourselves in the work of European storytellers. What's new this year is that the stories are ordered by theme. Let's see, there is love, desire, elsewhere, war, thought, art, music, children, family, home, crisis, work, and evil. What's not new? The collected fiction embraces both straight-laced realistic tales and stories that are unabashedly weird. Translators are celebrated alongside the, author, the authors themselves. Stories that come from a range of language traditions find ways to converse with each other. The hybridic nature of this anthology gives it a rare dynamism. It's coming to be one of the books I most look forward to each year. Inexplicably, the anthology features a preface by American author Nicole Krauss. There is no explanation or context given for why Krauss was chosen to, uh, to introduce the anthology to us. Krauss details the influence that writers and translation had on her. She writes that things would have turned out very differently for me if the writings of Bruno Schultz, Franz Kafka, Jorge Luis Borges, Italo Covino, Bahumo Rabel, David Grossman, and others uh, to name just a few, had not come down to me at an impressionable age, first through the almost impossibly narrow shoot provided for literary translations into English, and then via a series of lucky accidents. While I still think it's strange that uh, an American author is, bringing, is introducing this volume of European fiction to us, I do appreciate that she centers the experience of the reader in encountering the kind of fiction that is included in the Best European Fiction series. But of course, the real story is the stories. The fiction in BEF 2012 feels more mixed than the previous two editions, with more middling stories than I expected, and few that I fell head over heels for. Agustin Fernandez Paz has a strange story narrated by a ghost dog that didn't have do much for me. It is neither the only story the anthology narrated by an animal, nor the only ghost. On the other hand, Croatia's Maja Ergovic hits hard with the second story in the anthology called Zlatka. It's a beautiful and funny tale about a woman who falls for her hairdresser. David Deffy from Georgia gives us Before the End, a slowed down account of a man's experience before a firing squad. Just before the bullets hit him, he's told by death, in wartime, nobody is responsible. War justifies everybody's death. Dulkey Archive Press, the publisher of the Best European Fiction series, tells us that the new thematic ordering is to facilitate book club and reading group discussions, which sounds great to me, but I do wish that they push, pushed further in this vein, perhaps by, by providing additional material about the writers and the translators, or more of a macroscopic picture of the different literary traditions emerging from uh, different lingu linguistic and national cultures. I looked up some of the contributors online, hoping to find out more about them and their work, and perhaps as to be expected given the urgency of the Best European Fiction project, there is often little to be found. If I were to lengthen my wish list, why not? It would be for Alexander Hemmen to give us a more rigorous accounting in his introduction for what was chosen and especially what was not chosen in for this anthology. As another reviewer pointed out, Italy is a mysterious absence from these pages. So is Austria and Sweden. Taking what is on these pages in Best European Fiction, what I liked best is the black comedy, inventive sentences, and dramas that grapple with the ferocity of modern life, from same-sex love affairs to terrorist attacks. This is a book to keep on your nightstand and to pick through over many months. And nerd alert, you might even find some fun, as I did, in finding the rhymes between the stories included in Best European Fiction and the headlines in the World News section of your newspaper. Thank you.